Welcome back. Our guest on this episode of Tea Time is a Nigerian rapper, singer, and songwriter. He has been nominated for and won many prestigious awards, including MTV Africa Music Awards for Revolution of the Year in 2015, the Hedis 2016 Nestrated Award, Afrima 2017 Award for Best African Hip Hop, and the Hedis 2019 Award for Lyricists on the Roll. With over 20 singles, two EPs, and an album, let's make welcome the one and only YC. <laughs> Yeah, the crowd. Welcome to the show, crowd. Crowd. Thanks for having me. Yes, yeah, so I want to start the show with a diss track for YC. Wow. I have this one. Already. Already, yes. Like, okay. Who's okay. going to give me the beat? I'll give you. Mm -hmm. Go. Oh, yeah. How do I start? Sass, I'm not sure you were. Sass, I'm a drop out. It's already, it's already, it's already a disaster. Yeah, you're already <laughs> lost. You're already <laughs> lost. This is the Jagaban, we agree. What's up, bro? I'm good. How you going? How's it going? Great, man. So YC versus Zaha. Zahir. Zahir. Yeah. Okay. Thank God. Thank God yeah. I got that right. <laughs> okay. So um, Zahir, yeah. tell us about that. What was the inspiration behind the album? And why the two faces? Mm, I think you know the major inspiration behind it is the fact that I rap and I sing, you know, as equally as good. So like the decision to have a versus album or somewhat a two-sided album was always there because, you know. I knew whenever I'm going to put out my first album, it wasn't going to be just one side. So YC and Zahir are like two personalities when it comes to my music. YC being the singing side, Zahir being the rapping side. So yeah, I think that's that's just not to make it more complex than it already is. You know, that's just the basic idea behind the album. Why did it take you this long to drop this album? Mm. It didn't take me long. It did. So long. It did. I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting since. Well, I think, you know, an album is, is not an easy project to embark on. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I didn't know how hard it is until I started you know, working on it. And the album was pretty much ready to drop last year, but due to, you know, certain issues that I had to deal with at the time, we had to shelve the album for a bit. And after dealing with those issues, setting up my own company, I felt like the next step I wanted to take was just put out this album because a lot of people have been asking where's YC, where's the music, so that's I think that's why it took so long. Okay, I'm talking about why you have to shelf the album for um, some time. So, yeah. Um, before you dropped the album, your yeah. former um, record label released yeah. two tracks. Um, mm. Is that one of the reasons why you have to shelf the album for a while? Mm, not really. I think you know the the main reason behind me you know, slowing the album down was because I was actually terminating the contract with them. So, oh, okay. you know, at that point in time, I couldn't release any music because the termination process was being carried out. So that's that's like the main thing. Them leaking the songs didn't do anything to the album. They thought it would, but it didn't. Mm, All right, so nice. I know one of the reasons why you were trying to terminate, or why you terminated your contract with mm. Tiny was a breach of contract, yeah, right, yeah. on their part. Yeah. So can you elaborate on this? Tell us, how did they breach your contract and what are the things they did so that other artists can learn from this? Mm, I think majorly, you know, the most important thing was by the contract obligations I was supposed to be receiving, you know, my streams, like a percentage from the money that was being mm. made off of my music and now I didn't receive a single dime of that and I, several times I tried to you know create that opportunity for them to cure the breach and mm -hmm. handle this as amicably as possible but for some reason they just wouldn't budge so I had to terminate. And I think that's the only reason I can speak on because that's already public knowledge. But, uh, but no, we want to know other reasons. Like, give us <laughs> spill. This is called tea time. Yeah, you have to spill spill. some tea. Ah, yeah, yeah, spill. What what other reason that you haven't said anywhere else that made you be like, why is he, yo, I need to leave this record label? I think aside, you know, the breach, mentally I was not in a good space, mm -hmm. you know, because there was, like, so much going on. You know, I, I wasn't properly concentrating on creating music. It was not a situation where I was making music because I just wanted to take my mind off of mm. some other stuff. Like So mentally, I was not in a good space. And I just felt like any way I could, I just needed to get out of it. 
Okay, okay so, so now are you on your own? Or yeah, you? yeah, I'm, I'm an independent artist now, signed to myself. Okay. All right, looking at your journey, it seems you understood the business part before even coming to the business because you know what you want. This yeah. contract is not working, you're already seeing it. It's not a case of, oh, I'm already losing money and there's yeah. no cross. Mm -hmm. So how would you say you prepared yourself? Because there are so many upcoming artists that would just sign anything. So what was that preparation like for you? I think, you know, for me, um, I'm somebody that, whatever I embark on, before I set out on something, I, I like to fully understand, you know, what I'm getting myself into. And I think a lot of young people are desperate because, first of all, the country is very hard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have artists that don't have access to, say, studio time, you yeah. know, don't have access to, like, they're not sure when they're going to get their next meal or, you know, no shelter. So that's why you see a lot of people signing these deals looking desperate because, some people just sign because, oh, this guy has promised me that there's going to be a 24-hour studio available for you. You know, we're going to give you a house, a car, mm -hmm. and, you know, just, like, basic needs are going mm -hmm. to be fulfilled. And then when you, you know, you start growing as an artist, you start learning more, you start seeing that you, know, you should be getting more yeah. than what it is. So I think for me, you know, education on the situation was very important because even before... Before I sign any contract, I always the important things are to know what are my obligations, what also are the obligations of the other party. Okay, you also look at what percentage are you getting. And I think another important thing that a lot of people don't even check when it comes to contracts is termination. Mm. And you know what are the terms of termination? Mm. Because there are some contracts that even after you've terminated, you are still tied to these people. Mm -hmm. So it is, you know, properly understanding what you're getting yourself into. And it's just sad that in this day and age, you might even sign a good contract, but, you know, if you sign a good contract with a bad person, mm. it's the same thing as signing a bad, bad contract. contract. Mm. Right. So it's always, you know, just understand what you're signing. Also make sure that you know the way out of whatever it is you're signing. Was it all your understanding or you had a lawyer from the get-go? From the mm. get-go. I didn't even have a lawyer from the get-go. Okay. Yeah. I just, I, I was able to have people look at my contract that had knowledge. Mm. Okay. And, you know, they were like, okay. But later on in my career, obviously right now I have, you know, a lawyer. And I think it's, it's unfair on artists because when artists come out to say, oh, labor issues, you see people saying when artists don't have lawyers there to read their contracts. Mm. But not that many artists can afford lawyers. Not even artists, like... Every, people like living their everyday life. It's mm. not everybody that has a lawyer. True. Yeah. Lawyers are very expensive. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so um, let's talk about your new album, yeah. yeah. I'm sure a lot of people were anticipating um, Whiskey and track Fino. Is a lot of people were anticipating <laughs> um, Whiskey and Fino, mm. and the album is out. They're not there. What happened? No, Fino's on the album. Um, yeah. Whiskey. Yeah, Whiskey is not on the album. Why? You, you said that I, sometimes I, last year that it was going to be on it. Yeah, so I, I mean, I tried, you know, I tried to get Whiskey on it, but it, it didn't work out for, you know, I don't know why, but we weren't able to get in the studio, you know, our schedules didn't align. Whiskey is, Whiskey is, I don't think me and Whiskey have seen in a while because the few times he's in Lagos, Whiskey can come into Lagos this morning and by night time he's already gone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was just, for some reason, you know, our schedules didn't align, we weren't able to knock that out, but moving forward, definitely, you know, I will. We should spit yeah. something. Yeah. Right. So yeah. would you call yourself a commercial artist? Because we got Jagaban from you, we got mm. Juice from you, and that was like street bangers back then. Mm. And even up to date, to date, there's still street bangers. Mm. And um, we've, we've had love songs from you, such as um, Late Night Vibration and yeah. stuff like that. So would you say you're a commercial artist or you're just versatile? Mm, I think it's a bit of both, you know. I'm commercial in the sense that, you know, I'm making music to make money at the end of the day. So mm. that's like one of the key priorities for me anytime I'm in the studio. And still at the same time, you know, I'm versatile when it comes to if I need to rap, I'm rapping. If I need to sing, I'm singing. But the most important thing is the commercial value of whatever I'm putting out. You know, even if it's not a street banger or even if it's not a club record or a dance record, you know. No matter anything I do, they always, you know, I always have to analyze the profitable side of it. If it's not profitable to put out a slow song, I won't put it out. If it's not profitable to put out a dance song, as crazy mm -hmm. as that sounds, you know, it's not every time that you put out mm -hmm. a dance song, mm -hmm. I won't put it out. So, you know, commercial value of whatever I'm putting out is the number one thing because... <laughs> 
as as fun as you know entertainment work is you know, it's still a profession and mm -hmm. you have to be smart with everything okay so i'd like to get your take on this issue going on right now between bonaboy and aka <laughs> and, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'd like to um, know oh, what exactly what, what exactly is your take on it? I mean, you're one of the celebrities that came out to speak out when the xenophobic attack was going on. Right now, what? Yeah, yeah <laughs> you, you know, started it, you know. Yeah, you started the whole war. So now, oh, oh, what, you brought out that. Would tweet. you say Bana Boy should apologize before going to perform there, or you should just stay away, mm. or just go and or just see what go happen. and see what happens? You know. I think personally, you know, if I was in his position, but. I feel like the only issue with what Bonobo tweeted at the time was, you know, his tweets at AKA. Bonobo, yeah, that, that didn't really sit well with me because at the end of the day, that's a liability because if anything had happened to AKA during mm. that period, whether it was from him or not, you know, his tweets no, had made him a you know, liability. But I think. Burner Boy, at no point, from my understanding of the tweets, at no point did he, you know, attack the South African people. I think what he was saying is he wouldn't set foot in South Africa until the government, you know, the South African government takes, you know, active steps mm -hmm. to fight against xenophobia, which sure. makes a lot of sense. True that. And seeing as, you know, a lot of people are emotional about the whole situation because he threatened, AK, we can't, you know, ignore that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, AKA came out to say Bonaboy must apologize to South Africans, but I don't see where Bonaboy needs to apologize offended mm. South, South Africans. Africans. So, so do you think yeah. he should apologize to AKA? If AKA wants Bonaboy to apologize to him personally, personally, he should come out and say Bonaboy should apologize not to Not South Africans. Not mm. trying to hide it as something else. And the, a lot of people have come out to say they don't want to see Burner Boy there. A lot of other South African artists have said they don't want to share the stage with Burner Boy mm. because he threatened their colleague. And if I was Burner Boy, I would, you know, release a statement and say, oh, I would love to come and support this cause. Because he's already said he's donating his earnings from the show to, yeah, you know, to fight victims. xenophobia. Yeah, victims of xenophobia. So if they don't want him there, I think he shouldn't go. Looking back on your journey, what's your biggest regret and what's your biggest achievement? Uh, my biggest regret? I think my biggest regret would be at a point in time in my career where, you know, I wasn't really speaking up. You know, there, there were situations I found myself in where there was a lot of mismanagement going on with regards to my career and, you know, I was somewhat quiet about it, but I think Looking back on that time, I feel like I needed to go through those things in order mm. to find my voice. And so in a way, it's not really much of a regret, but I still regret learning it. learning process. Yeah, mm. learning process, so mm. to speak. And I think my biggest achievement for me would be releasing my debut album independently. Mm. Because there's a lot that goes into it. It is very demanding physically, mentally, creatively, financially. And, you know, looking back, at, before I released the album, where it was there was a lot of uncertainty around it, like is YC going to be able to pull this off? Is the album going to make sense? How is he going to you know handle publicity and all that? But I thank God I'm in a position where I can say I released the album and the album is doing very 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 well. Within a week after, I think it's just yeah, it's been a week now, and you know I think we're about at over 1.5 million streams mm -hmm. on just three platforms. So that's you know, a step in the right direction. And yeah, that's my biggest achievement. OK, so earlier you said something about setting up your company yeah. and floating this. Now, which part of um, the music distribution or the music business is your company focusing on? Is it doing everything or you're outsourcing some part of it? Mm. Yeah, we, well, when it comes to distribution, definitely that has to be outsourced because, you know, I haven't created the channel for distribution from my end to the consumer. So mm -hmm. obviously that's like the, the key part of music promotion. You know, it has to be distributed the right way. So I would rather work with somebody that has, you know, a track record of doing this before than say, oh, I want to do everything myself because I'm just starting up an entertainment company and most of what I know I'm learning on go. So it would be actually very foolish of me to say I want to handle everything myself. So, mm. you know, distribution is being outsourced, but every other aspect, um, the music creation, music videos, you know, I come up with 
most of my scripts for my videos and I just whatever director I'm working with I always make sure that I have direct input into whatever becomes the finished product. I was growing up in Pesta um, affected your music growth. Mm, I think for me, you know, my growing up, my background as a child pretty much shaped me into the person I am today because I was exposed to a lot growing up, like, you know, at home, in the neighborhood, you know, both all sides of life, streets, bota, all that. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, growing up in Festac, Festac is one of those places that, you know, is creatively inclined in the yeah. sense that, you know, there are lots of creatives. If it's not musicians, they're actors or actresses or, you know, just people that are all around into creative arts. And, you know, as a young person, we're always exposed to, like, music shows, carnivals and mm -hmm. festivals and all that. So unconsciously, there's, there's that... I would say there's that creative gene in everybody that, you know, I don't know about right now, but, you know, from my era, you know, there's that creative gene. So it's like until you decide what you want to do with it. So first, I obviously played a very, very big role and not just in my decision to make music, but also in the support I received. Because it's like at anywhere in the world, there's always a first act representative. There's always somebody... Two Baba is still right there. You know, exactly. But no track with Two Baba, come on. Why yeah, not? No, no, yeah. No, that one, it has to be very special. Mm. You don't mm. wait enough. Since you, you mentioned... Rush, <laughs> you can't rush that one. Yeah. Since you mentioned support, um, as the support from other artists in the industry, do they support you enough? Do you think yeah. you get enough support from them? Or mm -hmm. you think everybody's just really doing their own thing? I think everybody is, you know, doing their own thing because at the end of the day, nobody owes you anything. Mm. Mm. So first of all, but I receive support from, you know, the few people that I would consider as my friends in the industry. In as much as everybody says, you know, the industry is fake mm. and all that, which is true. But, you know, at the same time, my mentality to a lot of things is nobody owes you anything. Mm. So I basically support those that support me. And, you know, I just, I, I don't take anything to heart. What are your friends in the industry? Mm, friends in the industry, uh, BOJ, uh, Cash, Ricardo, Peruzzi, Dremo, Milko. Yeah, just, it's a small circle. I don't... All right. You walked into this building and all these girls were screaming. So it's, why is he in a relationship? Really? Yeah. Yeah. really? No, not you guys. I don't know. But yeah. I, I didn't see you guys. <laughs> I didn't see you guys when you were screaming. So before you tear me up. No, I had no idea. So I yeah, that's to right. Right. Yeah, from the newsroom to oh, wow. the top floor to... Now I'm blushing on his behalf. Yeah. 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 Like, I, I just lost two girls just right now. Ah. Why wow. you do? Why you so doing why is he single? His wife is single. His wife is in a relationship. Because I know you were happy broken when you did late night vibration yeah was like two years ago <laughs> yeah. so are you uh, single in a why she's not single oh yeah there's yeah. a special woman thank god <laughs> yeah. okay our time is up but i think you are you singing or rapping mm -hmm. which one are you doing are you going to be zahir or mm -hmm. why is he right now um, i'm going to be zahir okay right, so let's okay yeah. what am i doing anything just, anything. <laughs> just, uh, just be you um okay Clock can on moment super tip. Getting five stars like an Uber trip. Went from tiny money straight to super rich. Twisting up the dreams like a lunatic. Man, I feel like Martin Luther did, cause I had a dream and I was super lit. Call me Damien Lottie Crew and quit, cause I murdered everything, including this. Hey, man, I've been looking and vibing. I only go where I'm invited. You say that you flex and you lie. Uh. Your music, now moment of silence. Uh. Killing from Giddy to Cali. I got all my shooters beside me. You wonder why we brothers grind it. My pocket should look like design. Uh, mm. my okay. Because why she got a wifey? That's <laughs> 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 all for this episode of Tea Time. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always good to Michael Ankos, Ewaluwa Ritu, Ife Oluwa Oshunkeye, and of course, our studio guest, YC. Thank yeah. you for being here. My name is Elsie Godwin. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.